you young people think that you know the Lord. A lot of you young people think that you can do it your way. And But she's trying to tell you that drinking and driving, drugs and driving, just your way is not God's way. He doesn't approve of it. And even though he had his hand on her, doesn't mean he's going to watch over you at all times when you disobey him. God delivered her through this. God prepared that fisherman. I don't know who he is, and I hope if he's watching that he too will contact me someday because I'd like to get his testimony. But I do know that God sent him from the lake to her in a burning car to pull her out. And like the EMS said, she didn't have minutes. She had sackets. It's only sackets before she burned alive. And she's got bad burn scars on her now from where God spared her. And church, all the only thing I can tell you is that she's here because of God. She's here because of his grace and his mercy. And if you're sitting in here today and you think that you know how, it's going to work out for you. It, it's not that way. God is in control of all things. Tristan, is there anything else you want to add to that? Um, going back to the fisherman whose boat wouldn't crank that day, a few weeks after the wreck, without putting in any work on his boat, he took it back out to the lake and it cranked easily, no problems. And a year later, I guess you call it the one-year one anniversary of the wreck, my mom was at an ATM and she seen a guy in front of her that looked like him. She was thinking to herself, is that him? But she didn't say anything. And then he turned around and he walked over to her because he recognized her. It was the same day of the wreck in the same hour. Isn't that something? He was obedient to God. And a lot of times when God tells us to go and do things, we don't understand why. I don't know why I came to Chapel Hill that day, and my wife, because I didn't know you. I had seen you a time or two with your parents here in church, but I didn't know you. I didn't even know her name. Matter of fact, when Debbie and I were trying to find her in the hospital, we didn't know your name. <laughs> we were saying, uh, what's her name? I don't know. I thought you knew. I don't know. And uh, But we didn't know her name, but I'm telling you that when God's got a plan, you better be obedient. Amen. He All I knew is he told me to go to Chapel Hill. I went, I saw her, and we started praying. That's all we could do is pray and give her words of encouragement, tell her that God was in control and God was going to take care of her. I didn't know anything about the story. I didn't know anything about the accident. I didn't know anything. I think you and I, you talked to me and told me a little bit about the wreck later on. But I didn't know anything about it because I told her, I said, I don't know anything about what went on. But I do know that God spared your life for a reason. And I hope that there's other young children or young teenagers or young ladies, young men out there that will listen to your testimony because you've been there. You've been on this bed. I've been there too. And I know it's no fun. But the only thing you have comfort in is knowing that Jesus Christ is watching over you. Anything else? Praise God. Well, I, I, you know, the thing that we have to do is we have to praise him in all things. We have to praise him. And the pictures are on the screen. And I want you to see where she was and where God brought her from. And for all of those joining by television, by radio, I know those joining by radio can't see it. But this girl was broken up. She was burned. She was She was in bad condition. And God... You had brain damage. You had all what well, they said at that time. You had all that stuff wrong. But we know that God's bigger than any doctor's diagnosis. And he is in control of all things. And I want to thank you for coming and sharing this with us today. I want to talk for just a few minutes about Jesus. Because church, until you've been where she has been, until you've been on this bed, you don't know the power of God. You don't know the power of prayer. And a lot of people claim, and this is what she was talking about a few moments ago, a lot of people claim to be Christians, 
But are we truly Christians? Do we live and do what God wants us to do? In the last days, and this is something that God's been laying on my heart all day, is uh, ever since I got up this morning at 5, 5.30, I don't know what time it was, God's been laying this on my heart that many people, you remember the, the virgins, ten virgins in the Bible? Five were ready and five weren't. And when the five that weren't went out and got what they needed to get in, the master had already come. And they went and they started beating on the door. Let us in. He said, who are you? They told him. And he said, depart from me. You missed it. And church, this is why there's many in the Bible in Matthew chapter, is it seven, eight, nine, somewhere along chapter seven. Many are going to come to Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, let us in. And he's going to say, they're going to say, didn't we speak in tongues? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we preach? Didn't we do miracles? Then we cast out devils in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And he says in, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He's talking about God's will. You've got to do it. You can't just talk about it. You've got to do it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And you know what Christ is going to say? He's going to say, yeah, you did it in my name. But if you read on down, listen to what the next sentence says. And then will I profess unto them. It says Christ talking to the ones who come and said, Lord, Lord. I never knew you. You're not a backslidden Christian from so-and-so denomination. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, there's a lot of people, the Bible says in the book of James, chapter 2, I believe it is, that even the devil knows Christ. Even the devil knows the name of Jesus. And he knows it with trembling. He knows God. But we've got people today that claim they know God. And they don't know him. They don't know God. And some of you in here may not know him as your Lord and your Savior. You may know the name, but you've got to have that relationship with him. You've got to have a personal relationship with Christ. And I want, uh, there's a couple other scriptures I want to go to. Strive. I know that over in the book of Luke is where I want to go to first, I believe. Luke chapter 13, I think, is where it's at. Strive to enter in. Let's go back to 22, Luke 13, 22. Let's read a couple of scriptures here. And he, speaking of Jesus, went through the city, cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. He was headed to Jerusalem. But he went through the cities and the towns and the, the villages, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few to be saved? And he said unto them, and this is Christ talking, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. This is going back to the ten virgins and going back to many people. They wait until it's too late, until they see that they're lost until they see that it's there, they need to get in. And when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence are ye are. Whence ye are. Where are you coming from? I don't know you. You see, many people, you may know the name Jesus, but does he know you? I mean, we know that God knows everything and everybody, but does he know you as a son or as a child? Does he know you? Have you called upon him? Have you let him become Lord of your life? This is where God, this is where